Hello, and thank you for joining us here on The Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by my partner in crime, my esteemed colleague, and today my virtual companion, it's at Eric Dahl. Phil, two screens apart, but always together. Yes, this is not how I wanted to start the new year. I wish we were together in person, but uh, this is, you know, you got to adapt. You got to, you got to go with the flow. That's right. You got to, uh, this podcast still matters, it's still important. So we're, yes. uh, we're giving it the attention it deserves that it needs. But it's we're gonna, much we're like gonna take the, people. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, it's much like the uh, final play, uh, Broncos game of the regular season here. It's still important and it still matters. Exactly. That's 100% correct. And uh, we can go through the game uh, play by play, I think, is our plan for today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, one minute per play. And then uh, afterwards, we'll kind of discuss each day of the offseason and what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, we'll take you all the way through it. No, we'll uh, we'll break down this uh, Broncos victory over the Chargers, a sixteen to nine win. Uh, the Broncos sweep the Chargers this season, and uh, of course, it was Jared Stidham's first win in the NFL. So uh, we'll talk a lot about that, Eric. Uh, just your thoughts, kind of on uh, how he played. Uh, Sean Payton said that hey, uh, uh, it didn't feel like he was working with a young player. Yeah, I think I think you start there with Jared Stidham and um, the fact that he was able to go in there and win a football game in his third start of his career. First time uh, that he gets a win. So I asked him post game. I was like, "Do you realize the last time you won a football game was five years ago?" And he was like, "Thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Appreciate <laughs> that." Um, but but I think it it spoke to what it meant to him. He said he texted his wife right after. Um, meant a lot to him to get his first NFL win and for this team to get an eighth win. And um, it wasn't perfect by any means. And we can kind of go through some of the, the better plays he made some, maybe some missed opportunities, but as Sean Payton said, um, both Sunday and then again, Monday, the operation was, was decent. Um, He thought that, uh, you know, obviously Jared Stidham did not turn the ball over, which was big. The Broncos, Phil stayed on the field. They did not go three and out in the football game. Um, it, it wasn't as as great in the second half, but in the first half, they they moved the ball well, 235 yards, which was their most in a first half this season. Um, and that kind of speaks to maybe the spark that Sean Payton was looking for. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there are moments in a game where you'd like to see things be a little bit cleaner. Uh, obviously, uh, when you're first and goal from the one yard line, you'd like to punch that in there. But I. Uh, you know, we talked about this last week with <clears throat> Stidham coming in. There's a different cadence there at the line of scrimmage than uh, everybody's used to. You saw a couple of <clears throat> false start penalties there, backed them up. They had to uh, end up settling for a field goal in that situation. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, the Broncos didn't do things that, like, in the past, we've seen them really hurt themselves, turning the ball over, taking huge sacks that just like end drives. And then I think you mentioned the three and outs. The Broncos never had that lull in the game where they just weren't able to do anything and the defense was out on the field forever. That never really happened. And we've heard Sean Payton say in the past that a lot of games are lost in the NFL. They're not actually won. And the Broncos, they just didn't beat themselves against the Chargers. And that's a team that, if you just line up and play clean football against, you would hope that the Broncos would come out victorious, and and that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't flashy, it wasn't spectacular, but you're right. They just they were never in danger of losing a football game because um, they just played clean football, and even if they didn't score points, you know, that first drive of the third quarter, still not able to score points, but you get a first down. Uh, I think maybe the two first down, then, then you're able to, to flip the field and kind of change things up. Um, again, play the game in the opponent's half, which Sean Payton talks so much about how important that is. And yeah, just because you didn't make mistakes, you didn't throw a bad pick, you didn't, um, you know, lose the football at any point. Um, you know, you just, you didn't give the Chargers life when 
they didn't really have any business winning a football game. And then you just play clean football, clean football, clean football. And then boom, on the first play of the fourth quarter, the defense finally gets a takeaway. They force a fumble um, on Austin Eckler. And, you know, even though the Broncos can't score a touchdown there, they still push the lead back, um, I believe, to two possessions at that point. And it, it just, it's over, essentially. And and it wasn't, again, glamorous. And, um, you know, if, if you're playing uh, the Baltimore Ravens, would you need to play a higher level of football to get a win? Probably. but. There's something to be said in this league of, as we talk about a lot, Phil, taking care of the teams that you're supposed to beat, especially at home, not giving them life, not giving them an opportunity where something weird happens in the final two minutes and they have a chance to win. And the way the Broncos played, they didn't, they never gave the Chargers that chance. Uh, also, if they're playing the Ravens, they got to step up their dance game in the locker room afterward. Of course, uh, John Harbaugh, man, showing off some of his moves there. Uh, Eric, I don't know if you saw at the end of that game, uh, the Ravens also scored a late touchdown. You know, uh, we, we forget about that Vic Fangio, John Harbaugh combination there. So little aside there, but, uh, you bring up the Ravens. I, I thought that was uh, sort of interesting yesterday. Um, but yes, I think that Stidham, uh, overall, uh, that's the kind of game that you are expecting from him. A uh, little bit, maybe, uh, some, uh, nerves there, some, uh, uh, anxiousness that first drive. But once you saw him settle in, he was able to make some throws. I saw that. I thought that the Broncos tried to uh, complete some slants. Brandon Johnson, uh, you know, working over the middle of the field. I I thought we saw more of that than we've been used to seeing. And then, uh, of course, the play L.J. Humphrey had. Uh, you see, uh, did him step up, get outside of the pocket, make a nice throw. He said he he was thinking about running right there, but then he looks up, sees Humphrey, delivers a pass, and then of course. Uh, uh, some nice blocking down the field and then some incredible plays by uh, Humphrey there to break tackles. But uh, yeah. And then, and then uh, right before halftime, you know, the pass to Jerry Judy, that was like 41 yards. So right there, that's like 95 yards on those two plays, but those are two big plays that, uh, you know, Stidham helped create those plays by moving around in the pocket a little bit. And uh, I thought that he settled in nicely and, you know, that's sort of what you expect for somebody who's making just their third career start. Um, Sean Payton's playbook, obviously, uh, it's very deep. And uh, he said on Monday, it's not about just the entire playbook, but it's about what we put into the game plan that week. And, uh, you know, I thought that overall, that's sort of what you are expecting from Jared Stidham in this one. And then you would hope to see a little bit of growth this next game uh, going up against the Raiders, even though it's going to be on the road and against uh, maybe a, what you would consider a better defense with the Raiders. Uh, you would hope that just having one game under your belt with all these guys, you would hope that uh, there's a little bit of a, an improvement. And, uh, you know, I thought that for a first uh, start with the Broncos, uh, that was sort of what you were expecting. Yeah, he hasn't played meaningful snaps in a regular season game in a year, right? I mean, he obviously played in the preseason, and that's helpful, but it's different. It's not the same speed. It's not the same pace. It's a different world. Um, and especially early, you've got Cleo Mack coming at you. We took some hits. Um, you've got to adjust to that speed. I did think early, Phil, there were a couple balls that maybe were behind where he wanted them or you know, maybe yeah, not quite sure. um, as accurate as you needed. But that he cleaned that up, I thought, as the game went along, um, made some nice rhythm throws, got the ball out quickly, I thought, which we know, um, you know, that you're facing a good rusher, the way to to slow that rusher down, get the ball out fast. And, um, you know, I thought there were a couple nice throws. There was one on the first drive of the third quarter. Um, again, they end up punting, but he has a nice third down throw uh, to, to get Humphrey. a conversion there yep. to Humphrey. Um, there's another one I think you mentioned on that when they started uh, first and goal at the one and ended up moving backwards. He did make a nice throw to Brandon Johnson to get back down to the one yard line. Um, you talk about the two minute drill that comes from, you know, trusting your read, but giving the ball to your playmakers in space, giving Jerry Judy a chance to um, to run out of the football. Certainly that felt like one of the longer what, post-catch runs that Jerry Judy's had all season. Yeah. Um, and if if Will Lutz is able to make the, the 48-yard field goal, which is a reasonable field goal attempt, you're looking at a 16-3 halftime lead. Um which would have been significant. I think that would have been the second highest 
first half scoring total of the season. So that kind of speaks to um, what that would have meant if that kick went in for the Broncos. Um, and then one thing I wanted to mention on the little Jordan play, Phil, the, the touchdown was just, if you want to talk about kind of these guys believing and still buying in and, and playing for something, I mean, look at Jerry Judy kind of running down there to get a piece of the defender to help Will Jordan get free or look at Mike Burton who makes the initial blitz pickup, I believe in the backfield and then is all the way down at the five yard line to make a block. I mean, these guys are still playing hard and um, yeah, I thought again, Jared Stidham, some things to clean up. Um, The second half wasn't as great, but I anticipated that you probably have to deal with an interception or two based on, how his previous two starts had gone. And so for him, yep. he didn't really even put the ball in harm's way at any point. There wasn't like a near interception or anything like that. Um, so yeah, credit to him for a, a good solid, I think first start. And you've got to remember that a lot of this looked kind of somewhat similar, but um, I think you're looking at a guy that's only had three career starts. So you only expect it to get better from here. And so that's part of the evaluation too, is saying, Okay, well, the offense only scored 16 points, but they did have some good yardage totals, gave themselves some chances, didn't turn the ball over. And you only expect this guy to get better the more he's able to play. Yeah. And I, I you know, I thought that the Broncos overall played very good complimentary football. You know, I, aside from the Will Let's miss, uh, I thought that the special teams played very well. Uh, Zach Allen had a blocked field goal, uh, Drew Sanders made uh, the stop uh, on the fake field goal, on uh, the fake punt. So I thought the special teams all overall played pretty well. The defense was solid, obviously did not allow the Chargers to get into the end zone. Josie Jewell had the turnover. Uh, you mentioned this on the Broncos postgame show, but uh, the Broncos are now 8-1 and one when they win the turnover battle, Eric, uh, which is a good uh, good stat there. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that uh, even without Cortland Sutton or Marvin Mims out there, they were able to uh, still get some explosive plays. And uh, you're right, Eric. I, I, I do think that you expect this to, thing to get better. Uh, I mean, on the flip side, now there's a, there's some film out there that uh, opposing teams can study up on. Uh, but you do expect it to get better. And uh, if you look at his stats, Eric, they're sort of eerily similar to the game Russell Wilson played against the Chargers a couple weeks ago. You know, the numbers there are uh, very, very similar. So uh, you would hope that Stidham continues to improve. You mentioned the the timing on a couple of those plays, especially early. You know, I, I just in the back of my head, there was a pass to Judy that was behind him. He ends up getting hit pretty hard on that. I think Brandon Johnson ended up taking a, a pretty big shot too. But you would expect that his timing with these guys will continue to get better. And, uh, you know, there's a lot riding on this game against the Raiders. And, Sean Payton even said that on Monday that, hey, all these guys are playing for their futures, for their, you know, uh, for next season. And that includes Jared Stidham that, you know, if he's able to go out there and show some more positive signs here, he's going to give the Broncos brass uh, uh, something to think about this offseason. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like you said, Sean Payton said everybody is always playing for next year to make an impression. But I think... Jared Stidham and, and kind of where the Broncos are at the moment. If he plays well, um, I think he puts himself in a good position. And obviously, like you said, gives gives the Broncos front office coaching staff something to consider. Um, and, and obviously, they thought very highly of him when they went out and made him a priority in free agency back in um, in March. And Sean talked at league meetings when we were there, Phil, about Jared Stidham's traits or uh, characteristics that that led you to believe he could have future starting potential. Um, and it's only a two game sample size. And again, we'll have to see what he um, can do. Some of it may be, uh, may be beyond his control. Um, you don't really ever know how things are going to play out. It's a long off season, a long way to go before you get to next season. But what he can control is going out and playing another good football game and leading this team to another win, um, playing clean football, being better in the red zone. Um, you know, the Broncos still, they've struggled this year, Phil, particularly in goal to go situations. They've not been, um, effective in those scenarios. So maybe if Jerry, excuse me, if Jared Stidham can go out there and improve in the red zone, they were 0 of 2 yesterday, 0 of 1 goal to go. You know, be effective in that scenario. Maybe you, uh, 
kind of shore up your resume a little bit, so to speak, as you head into the off season. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, the other thing that's gone for Stidham here is that uh, there should be a little bit less distractions this week uh, as the team gets set to prepare for the Raiders. I mean, last week, there was a lot. I mean, uh, there's just a lot going on when you make that change at the quarterback spot and, uh, you know, uh, the whole locker room, you know, and it sort of affects everybody. You know, the, that's all anybody was talking about for a couple of days there last week. So now that that is behind this team and they're able to just go into this week trying to get a win against the Raiders, hopefully uh, that'll sort of smooth things over, you know, and, uh, you know, you're just uh, like uh, last week talking to a a guy like Ryan Harris on Broncos weekend, Eric, he just said, look, you know, there's no matter who uh, you're talking about, when there's a quarterback change, there's a little bit of awkwardness, you know what I mean? And so uh, you're, everybody's just sort of in a different position. And, uh, you know, I thought that the Broncos, for them to go out there and handle it the way that they did and get that win against the Chargers, um, th- that really says a lot about just the, the makeup of this team and the locker room and the leadership. And uh, even Stenham, ta- after the game, talked about how good Russell Wilson was and, uh, you know, helped him through everything. And on, you saw it on the sidelines and everything. So uh, I think that uh, – now maybe they can sort of just turn that page. Uh, they don't have to talk about the playoff situation anymore, you know. Uh, even though you'd like to be able to uh, be in that mix, but the fact that that's sort of out the window now, you can just focus on trying to to get a win against a Raiders team that's really had the Broncos number here of late. And it seems like this year has been the year of breaking some of these streaks. The Broncos uh, have gone on the road and won in prime time and. They've beaten the Chiefs this year. So if you add this and you get that ninth win for the, for the season, Eric, I think you could head into the offseason. Uh, even though you'll have some, uh, some uh, you know, conversations about what the future of the quarterback position looks like, you still have some positive uh, momentum if you're able to get this win. Yeah, and we, we heard the guys, Phil, in the locker room last night talk about the value of that ninth win of having a winning season. And obviously everyone wants to go to the playoffs and there was some scoreboard watching going on. Um, the rock has got some results that he needed in that early window, the Colts, um, the Texans, the Jaguars, and then that late window, they needed either Pittsburgh or Kansas city to lose both of those teams ended up winning. So you're, you're eliminated almost kind of simultaneously to when you get this win. And so there was kind of a, a, um, a mixed feeling in the locker room, just of guys being excited that they won, being proud that they ended the the home season, home slate with a win, five and four, uh, winning record at home. Um, but but also, I think Justin Simmons put it well when you're talking about well, there were missed opportunities against the Commanders, against the Jets, against uh, the Raiders. It's the first time you played them at home, the Patriots. I mean, I think these guys know that, that there were some some missed opportunities. But at the same time, Phil, this team has not won this many games since 2016. It's been seven years since they won this many games. Um, they can post a division record of four and two that is the best since 2015. Like you mentioned, you can end a seven game streak to the Raiders. You can beat the Raiders on the road for the first time since 2015. Um, going into week 18, Phil, you have twice as many wins as you did at this point a year ago. And so I think it's easy to to look at a season and say, well, you made the playoffs or you didn't, you know, that makes it either a success or a failure. But I think there's some nuance here in terms of how the Broncos season went and the fact that and maybe you didn't get to the playoffs, which was as Sean Payton um, said in that USA Today article way back at the beginning of the year was the, was the goal was the expectation. Um, but I, I still think if you're able to go from five wins to nine wins, that's a significant jump. Um, I think guys have started to learn how to win. Like you mentioned, you broke the streak against Kansas City. You have a chance to break the streak against the Raiders. The primetime streak went down and was ended. Um, so I think in a lot of ways, you can view this as kind of like a like a cleanse almost, right? Like where you just you get rid of some of these um, the bad these juju. clouds that have been. Yeah, like the, the clouds that have been hanging over you for years. And, um, you know, then you don't have to say, oh, you still got to make the playoffs and find a way to get over that hump. But you don't get the the stat of, oh, seven straight losing seasons or this many consecutive losing, you know, or um, 
you know, this many consecutive losses to a division rival or haven't had a winning record in the division. I think when you don't have to answer questions about some of those things repeatedly, there's just a better vibe in the locker room, a better mentality. And um, so that's some of what the Broncos are playing for this week. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if you don't have to talk about some of these just negative things that have gone on for a prolonged amount of time, then you're like, okay, we could just go play football against some of these teams. And it's not like, let's look at this recent history that's been so terrible. You know, and Sean Payton, to his credit on Monday, said, I didn't even realize that. But uh, but uh, definitely some of the players in the locker room uh, certainly are aware of uh, some of these streaks and the fact that they've been able to overcome those. That sort of helps you build confidence. And uh, not having to talk about it next year, I think, is a big deal. And Eric, you know, you mentioned some of these losses to teams with losing records, uh, particularly at home this season. I, I think you can look at those and sort of be frustrated that, uh, man, if we would have just won a couple of these, then we'd be in the playoffs. That could be some of the players thinking there. But I also think that this Broncos team maybe needed some of those struggles in order to get to this position where you have these growing pains and then finally you're able to turn the page. I, I, I almost sort of think that they had to like work through some of those things in order to get to the position where they did. And um, that's just uh, kind of what comes with uh, a season like this for the Broncos, where you're changing the culture, you're trying to improve, you're trying to change the mindset, you're trying to learn how to win, what it takes to do it week after week. Uh, I think that uh, some of those hardships, that's sort of what makes a team a team, and uh, you're able to get to this position. Now, uh, I do think that they learned that and they climbed out of that hole with that five-game winning streak. And to me, kind of when I look back at things, man, that Houston game really sticks out to me. Like, if you're just able to get that, who knows what would have happened this season. But uh, in the end here, the Broncos have a chance to get to nine wins, which I think is a significant number, uh, no matter how you slice it. Yeah, and we've, you know, we talked two, three months ago, Phil, at this point about the Detroit Lions. I know we brought them up a lot here. They're kind of like the official team of the Denver Broncos in some ways, just in terms yeah, of they're like, we, uh, it's certainly this podcast, they're like the <laughs> sister team. Yeah, exactly. Like a sort of a big brother situation. Yeah. But, um, you know, they started one and six last year in a little bit of a, a different scenario in terms of kind of the previous years, you know, it wasn't Dan Campbell's first year there in Detroit, but a one in six team that uh, rattled off eight wins in their final 10 games, uh, ended up nine and eight and just missed the playoffs, went out there the last weekend. We've, we've heard now a couple of times, even though they had nothing to play for, they kept their division rival out of the playoffs. Um, and the Broncos, if they're able to get a win here this weekend, Phil, they, they, uh, they'll finish the season eight and three, which obviously is eerily similar to Detroit and um, maybe a little bit different just going into the offseason in terms of uh, maybe uncertainty at quarterback, but um, I think still a team learning how to win. I think there's eight and three down the stretch, no matter who you play. I don't think is is too shabby at all. That's obviously on on pace for something that's going to get you into the postseason most years. And so I'll be interested to see kind of how the, this this foundation and um, you know, Sean talks a lot about finding the right players and the ones that it matters to and um, the procurement of talents and, and all those sorts of things and, and building a culture of, of winning. I'll be interested to see how this kind of parlays itself into next season. I know that's a long way away, but I do think to some degree uh, this, this matters in that regard. It's yeah. not just a, a throwaway game here. And, and that's why Sean Payton said, Hey, if you're, if you're able to play this week, you're going to play. And when we're going to treat this like a week two game, a week six game, any, you know, any game that we would have on our schedule, um, we're going to, we're going to go out there and try to win this football game because that's what matters right now. Yeah. Uh, he's been asked a couple of times now, just uh, trying to see if uh, gauge his interest in like saying, Hey, let's not play some of these guys and risk injury going into the off season. And maybe you get some young guys like you want him to, like he's uh, a lot of reporters have asked him that seeing if he'll like sort of go down that road where, Hey, this game isn't that important. Let's get some young guys, some reps. 
uh, and not risk injury to anybody. He's like, no, that's not the mindset going into this game. You know, this is not just a throwaway game where let's just uh, get some guys uh, some reps and see what happens. That it, this is not a preseason game, Eric. Uh, they're they're very much uh, going out to Las Vegas trying to win this game, and uh, you know, certainly for some guys, uh, there's more opportunity now, and, and they're hoping to put that film out there, uh, trying to make one last impression this season. Uh, but for for the rest of the team, I mean, this is an opportunity to go out there and get a win, and and that's definitely the mindset, Eric, and. Uh, you know, the Lions uh, definitely have provided a nice template here to try and uh, sh- show what it what positive momentum into the offseason can do. I think that if the Broncos are able to get this win, when you're going into the start of next season, you're going into the offseason program, you, you sort of have this confidence, I think, if you're able to go out there and get this win. Because I don't know how you feel about it, Eric, but like nine and eight feels a lot different than eight and nine. You know, uh, just a, a winning season. You were able to go out there and win more games than you lost. There's something about that where, hey, you weren't able to get into the playoffs, but you you were just uh, you were knocking on the door of the division. You were knocking on the door of a wild card spot, and uh, there's just a lot of uh, positivity saying that, like, look, we're we're a good team that went through some rough bumps to start the year. We've worked that out of our system. Now we're ready to really hit the ground running. Uh, and I think that not to say that uh, everything the Bronx have built this year would go out the window with a loss, but just the the mindset and the, and the feeling would be much different saying that you had a winning season. Yeah, and again, I think you talk about like the eight and three that I think it does to some degree feel different to go eight and three or to look back and be like, well, you won one of your final Five, you know, I think that, that yeah, exactly. There's a difference there in terms of what that feels like, um, in my opinion, and uh, um, and so or one of your final five is that right, Phil? Yeah, that would be right, I think. And um, and so yeah, you know this this team is. Um, I think when you're learning how to win, I don't think you can just say we're going to shut it off this week and then week one next year we just turn it back on. I think that there's something to be said that you've got to build these habits, build these, um, you know, kind of that muscle memory of here's what it takes to win. Here's what it takes to avoid a loss. Um, and, and just kind of do that over and over until it becomes second nature. And maybe there's some teams Phil, that are really good. And, um, you know, are like the Ravens this week, for example, maybe they say, Oh, we're not going to play our starters this week. And we're going to, um, we don't really care about the result. We're going to rest our guys. But I don't know that the Broncos are in that. I mean, they're obviously not in that position, but I, I'm not sure it's as easy right now when you're learning how to win and you're trying to build a program if it's wise to just say, oh, you know, we'll, we'll pick it back up next year. I, I think you've got to always have that mentality of we're trying to win, we're trying to get better. And so I think probably from Sean Payne's perspective, that, that's likely part of it, that you've just got to learn what winning is like and get used to it. And, um, and then try to parlay that into next year. Yeah, and I think it's two of the final six, Eric. I think that that's where uh, the Broncos would be. Two Chargers wins over the over that uh, stretch. Yeah, there. but um, I yes, I I agree that uh, also there's like a discipline sort of uh, to it here where you're like this is a game week. This is how I do this. This is what my my uh, routine looks like. This is how we get ready. There's no like a uh, weeks off. You know, and, uh, you know, it's one thing when you have the number one seed locked up and you're trying to uh, protect your guys and get ready for a postseason run here. But it, for the Broncos here, it's very much about uh, setting a tone, building that culture and building a toughness. You know, there's a sort of a toughness that comes with Sean Payton and the way that he carries himself. And the players are really sort of bought into that this year. Certainly during that five game winning streak, they were raw. Roll- they were just in in rhythm there where this is what game week is like. This is how we do it. This is how we win. This is how we operate. And uh, this team is certainly um, uh, trying to continue to build that and, and build that toughness. And uh, that continues this week, even though uh, the playoffs aren't, aren't in the picture here. Eric, curious, uh, who are some of the guys, though, that you're really interested in seeing going into this last week? Just uh, some young guys maybe out there 
who can make a final impression. Some guys who are set to have a, a big off season here. I know one guy that comes to mind for me, like a guy like PJ Locke. He's done so much mm-hmm. over this uh, these final few weeks here. Obviously, the Broncos uh, have parted ways now with Kareem Jackson. And uh, it it does seem like the PJ Locke has made an impression. I know he's looking to finish this season strong, uh, heading into an off season uh, where he's hoping to uh, get a new deal. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's played well. Um, I thought probably a little bit better in the second half yesterday, a couple of maybe missed opportunities, missed tackles early. Um, But he, but he's had a a good season and and the Broncos are going to have to figure out, um, kind of what they want to do at that safety position, right? As they move into the off season, um, you know, I'll, I'll point to to Jonathan Cooper there at edge rusher, um, eight and a half sacks after a sack yesterday. Um, I believe that's the most since 2018 by a Broncos, uh, by any Bronco. And um, you know, if he if he has a strong game, that would give him maybe a 10 sack season if he can get a sack and a half there against Aiden O'Connell. Um, in week 18 and, you know, the, these young edge rushers, Cooper, Nick Benito, who came back from a knee injury and you could tell post game, he was asked, oh, how to feel out there. And he just kind of chuckled. I mean, you could tell he was playing through some pain, um, to be out there with his guys, but um, I think that's another area that I'm sure we'll talk about this off season of what do you do there? Do you need to add a guy? Um, do you feel comfortable with the growth of, of Cooper and Benito and Browning? Um, or, or, you know, what does the plan end up being there? But I just think Jonathan Cooper, a, a seventh round pick, a guy who at Ohio State got the block. Oh, you know, was um, just kind of always uh, had to, to scrap for things. He had the heart condition um, back when he entered the league. And uh, no, I think it's just been cool to see him succeed, Phil. And, um, you know, if he's able to get a sack and a half against the Raiders and get to 10 sacks, That'd be a pretty impressive accomplishment. And um, and uh, so hopefully he's able to, to get that done this weekend. Yeah, that, that would be amazing. Uh, and, uh, oh, you know, Sean Payton was asked, you know, oh, uh, at the beginning of the year, you went to this youth movement uh, at Edge when you've uh, decided to uh, let go of Randy Gregory, uh, Frank Clark. He was like, no, that's not what we did. You know, like, don't uh, label it that, you know. And I think that, uh, those guys have really stepped up. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, Nick Benito back out there uh, yesterday after missing a couple of games. Baron Browning. Those guys really uh, played well the, down the stretch here of this season. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, the two inside linebackers, the Broncos are going to, you know, I think there's sort of this notion that, oh, the Broncos need speed there. Or they need like a sort of a different type of athlete there. Both uh, Alex Singleton and Josie Joel have been playing really well, I think, you know. Uh, Josie Joel, three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries this year. Alex Singleton has has been really playing well. I mean, I think he still leads the team in, in uh, tackles. And yesterday he made one big hit that was sort of a thumper that, uh, you know, you're like, okay, that's a part of his game too, you know. And, uh, you know, any of these guys that um, sort of are uh, playing at a spot where there's a thought, okay, do the Broncos need to make an upgrade here? Do they need to make some changes here this off season? This is one final opportunity for them to go out there and say, Hey, uh, I, I I'm a playmaker here. I I'm a guy who belongs as a starter in this league. And, uh, this is a chance for them to go out there and, uh, put that on tape one more time. And, uh, you know, for, uh, for some of these guys, it's going to be, uh, an important game, you know, and just in sense of, uh, what their future looks like. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you look at the offensive side of the football, obviously, uh, you know, Jared Stenham will be the focus and rightfully so as he goes back to play the Raiders. And, you know, I'm sure we'll talk later this week, Phil, about the emotions that holds for him and, and what that'll be like for him to play his former team. But, um, you know, a guy like Julia McLaughlin, Phil, who's gotten more and more involved over the last couple of weeks, obviously made a big impact early in the year. And then there was kind of a spell where he didn't, you know, maybe teams were keying in on when he was in the game, it's going to go to him. And I think the Broncos have adjusted and found a way to get him the ball um, without kind of having a tell be there. And, um, you know, Sean Payton, it was interesting. He talked Monday and said, oh, Jaleel's come to me and, and, you know, he works with his running backs coach, but um, he'll come to sh- go to Sean occasionally and say, Hey, I'm, you know, how do I get more involved as a receiver or what can I be doing here? 
Um, and I think that's the kind of mentality and work ethic you love to see. Um, he's a guy that obviously has that speed that gives the Broncos a change of pace, um, something they maybe don't have from Javante Williams or Samaj P. Ryan. Um, but, but I'll be interested to see kind of how he evolves. The Broncos obviously went into the season thinking Greg Dulcich was going to be that kind of joker position that you could move around. Um, he obviously has not had the season he wanted, just appeared in, in two games very briefly. Um, and so Jaleel's, you know, Sean a couple of weeks ago said he wasn't quite ready to give Jaleel that joker tag, but um, another opportunity to prove that maybe moving forward, he can be that guy and um, just a, you know, great attitude, great, great guy. And, um, you know, it'll be exciting to see how he finishes his rookie season off. Yeah. Uh, one of the hardest workers on the team. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, I think that his usage, it seems like has depended upon the matchup, you know, like if, Hey, if this is going to be like a real physical bruise type game, it seemed like McLaughlin hadn't been used that much, but uh, you know, certainly yesterday came out there, had 44 yards on the ground, I thought did a nice job on uh, getting to the outside on a, a couple of plays where he ca- caught the ball on a screen and he's can be really dangerous there. You know, we haven't seen him break one for a, a huge touchdown yet, but um, certainly a, a, a magical type of season for him just to come in the way that he did make this team leave an impression there. And uh, you know, uh, he's got one more chance to uh, go out there and, and leave his mark and, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, there's guys, you know, where you're like, okay, do they need to get another playmaker? Do they need to add a weapon here or there? Do, you know, how are they going to reinforce stuff? And, uh, you know, uh, those are all things that we'll get into a lot more over the off season. But uh, I think that for a guy like McLaughlin, uh, this is a chance to go out there and say, look, uh, I, I belong in this league still. Uh, I, I made this team as an undrafted guy, but I'm I'm hungry. I'm looking to do more next year and uh you know uh exciting to see what the off season holds for him if he's able to who knows put on some more weight be able to put, be that joker guy uh, uh you know moving forward for this broncos team and uh you know we'll, we'll see what the off season holds for him so uh eric uh, anything else you want to touch on here any any other guys you want to look ahead to or uh uh you're ready to wrap well this i just way? the one yeah we can, we can wrap it up in just a minute no, i think no. the one thing that that I hope, um, and again, we can talk more on Thursday, but, you know, if you get guys like Corlin Sutton back from concussion protocol or if Marvin Mims, um, you know, we'll have to see kind of what the deal with his hamstring is. You know, maybe that's a little tricky or maybe you don't push that. Um, but I think with with Stidham, as he goes back to make this his first road star with the Broncos and kind of see how you can build on yesterday's performance, I think just as close to – kind of what you expect, the full, you know, um, group of receivers, of, of playmakers to look like the better. So you can get a fair evaluation of, um, you know, how Jared Stidham looks. Because I think part of yesterday, and, you know, I think there are fans, you say, oh, well, the stat line was almost exactly the same to what Russ put up against the Chargers. Or in, in week 14, it wasn't spectacular. They only scored 16 points. Yeah, well, they were missing you know, Corlin Sutton was not in the football game and, and Marvin Mims did not play in the football game. And so um, it's great that little Jordan Humphrey and, and Brandon Johnson, um, you know, and, and Lucas Kroll, you know, like some of these guys made some plays, but that was not necessarily um, kind of the, the you know, the, the Broncos are missing the guy with 10 touchdowns. Right. And so um, it'll be interesting to see, does that change anything? Does that, um, you know, just, I think when we evaluate Stidham from yesterday and, um, I did think one other thing with him. So he used his legs pretty well to move around. Um, when we evaluate him, I think that's just worth remembering was that this was not the, and in the NFL, it rarely is that you have every guy you need, but um, I do think it's like, that was the, the first game the Broncos, I think we're out, we're without Cortland this year. Right. And um, so that that's not an insignificant deal. No, I, I mean, I think that's a huge deal. And guys talked about that uh, after that new England game. Uh, even Joe Lombardi said, Hey, when you lose a guy like Cortland, you sort of have a game plan for like, okay, how are you going to adjust? But it's not like you have 14 out there. And, uh, especially for a guy like Stidham, uh, it's nice having a big body guy, a go-to guy, sort of like a security type of player where if you're in trouble, 
you know that you can sort of uh, get out of a jam maybe by giving uh, a 50-50 ball to Corlin Sutton and see if he's able to make a play. Not having that out there is a big deal. And uh, obviously that changes sort of everything on offense with how you're going to adjust with Jerry Judy. Uh, no Marvin Mims out there. Okay, what does that mean for Brandon Johnson? What does that mean for LJ Humphrey? Like uh, everything sort of changes when you don't have those guys out there. So you're right. You want to get a better accurate representation of what a Jared Stidham led offense looks like. You want to see with all, with all the guys out there. So um, yeah, that, that'll be a big deal. If he's able to play, that gives you a better sense of what Jared's able to do. And obviously that is going to be the the focus and the priority here is okay. If Jared goes out there and plays well, maybe he's able to make a few more plays here or there. Maybe the Broncos put up a few more points. Now you're going to have some real big decision to make here in the off season. And uh, you're right, Eric, they made getting Stenham a priority this off season. And uh, there's a reason why, you know, they like what this guy's able to do and, and what he's showing. And now it's like, okay, well, if you consistently get a solid performance from him, is that good enough to say, look, let's ride with this guy. So um, that's going to be a big opportunity for Sidham to go out to Las Vegas, play his former team. You know that he's going to be amped up for that. Uh, and obviously this Raiders team uh, has a lot of uh, weapons out there and uh, they've been able to really have a resurgence this year after they made a move at the head coaching position. Now they've, they've really come in, almost beat the Colts uh, yesterday. And uh, Max Crosby's out there playing like a crazed man. And uh, this is going to be a, a good test for Jared Stidham. Yeah, I think this is uh, not a team that's kind of thrown in the towel talking about the Raiders. And so it'll, it'll be good to see how he handles that. And, you know, can he get a big win? But I think um, regardless of, of that and uh, I'm sure we'll preview it moving forward, but I just think impressive to go out there after not having played in a year and, and not make the critical mistake, find a way to to make some throws down the field. Um, some very, you know, it's not perfect and it's got to get better. Um, but, you know, I think what Sean said was, hey, I'd seen a lot of issues the first 15 weeks of the season and, um, you know, they weren't necessarily all fixed yesterday and it doesn't mean that they're going to get fixed you know, kind of with this combination of players. Um, but he he felt he needed to try something. And um, I think that shows a coach that um, can kind of tell its team's uh, limitations maybe or, or where a team needs to improve and how it needs to, to get better. And I think he could tell, especially offensively, living off those turnovers wasn't a way, you know, to sustainably win moving forward. And so... Um, he needed to find a way to spark the offense. And again, it wasn't perfect, but it sounds like he saw Sean Payton, that is, saw some signs that uh, that he was hoping for. So um, again, hopefully we see more of that moving forward. Yeah, and look, that, that was a, a, a difficult situation for Stenham to step into. I mean, uh, so much going on with Russell Wilson all week long. Uh, he's playing in front of the home fans. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of pressure there, you know, obviously nice to play at home, but there's some tension there where everybody in that building wanted to see what was going to happen. And, uh, you know, I think you kind of feel that tension until uh, Humphrey made that play. Maybe there was a little bit of uh, tension there and uh, Stidham stepped in there and uh, you're right. It wasn't perfect, but there's so much uh, on his uh, plate there to be able to handle all of that and go out and get a win. Ultimately, this Broncos team won the game they did what they were. Their objective was. Uh, they accomplished that. They went out and beat a Chargers team, and then now you clean some things up. Hope hope to see some improvement and, and move forward here. But yeah, I mean that's a lot on Stidham, uh, and I thought that uh, overall handled things pretty well. And you even got that sense from Sean Payton afterward, where you were like, okay, what kind of tone is he going to set with his comments after the game, and then again on Monday morning. You know, he could have easily come out there and been a little bit more edgy about, you know, some of the miscues, not being able to score the touchdown there, you know, uh, having to, to burn a timeout early. He could have highlighted those things, but that's not the tone he said. You know, he he was very complimentary of the way that Stenham was able to handle everything. And I think that that uh, that says everything that you sort of need to know about uh, where Sean Payton stands with with a guy like Jared Stenham. 
Yeah. Well, and he's a young player too, right? You know, he's only got three starts. So you want it, you don't want to be too harsh. I mean, you've got to um, kind of build a guy like that up a little bit. Yeah. And, and but, but I think that he said, look, uh, Stidham didn't act like a young guy, you know, and, and just sort of the way that yeah. he carried the huddle and the way that he was able to do things out there, his, his grasp of the playbook, everything that they wanted to go out there and do. I think that uh, it, that says a lot about just sort of the, his mentality with Stidham and uh, we'll have to see what that means this week and, and, and how it looks, you know, and uh, you know, there was n- never any doubt about it. Like Stidham starting this game, you know, uh, Sean, you know, established that right off the bat. Uh, on Monday and uh, you know uh, it gives a little bit of excitement heading into this one just saying what what's it going to look like and obviously it's still the Raiders you want to beat the Raiders so uh, I think that uh, that's sort of uh, uh, what, what what the framework looks like heading into uh, week 18 Eric of the season still, still getting used to that week 18 I'm like what that's yeah you know? we got to figure it out Feels like uh, so much aligns up with the start of a new year at the end of the season. Kind of just got used to that, and now, even though it's a couple of years into more. it, yeah, exactly. Even though uh, we're a couple of years into this thing, it still feels like, oh wait, there's more, more football. You can't complain. More football. More football. All right. Well, we'll get into it a little bit more uh, later on in the week. I think that we'll be in studio, Eric. It's going to be nice to yes, be reunited. Of we'll be back. Uh, we did not send this Zoom link to uh, Ben Swanson. He was unable to uh, make it, but uh, maybe he'll be there in studio uh, as we wrap up the season. So uh, we'll have to see. There's some intrigue, some excitement, a little bit of a tease there for the Thursday show. So uh, let us know what you think. Uh, but until then, we hope that all of you have a uh, very happy new year, uh, good health and happiness heading into 2024. And uh, we'll see what it brings for the Broncos. But uh I was certainly excited to see how they wrap up this season. Until then, uh, for Eric Gaw, I am Phil Milani. You have been listening to The Neutral Zone. The Neutral Zone.